Oh baby, I like it raw, and so should you. Hey guys, welcome to Florin. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNace. So today, we're, all we're talking about is raw, and um, it's different from raw vegetables. It's actually camera raw, and I'm gonna show you guys basically everything you need to know about camera raw and uh, why you probably should be using it if you're not, and if you are using it, uh, maybe you learn some cool tips on how to use it uh, better. <sighs> yeah, I just got done sanding something, so I'm tired. It's a lot of work being a photographer. You gotta build some things sometimes. All right. Let's get into the episode. So to start off with, basically what we need to do is uh, talk about a couple of camera settings. So I'm just gonna pull up my camera here and um, the, the only thing that you really need to know here is um, you can shoot in JPEG mode or you can shoot in RAW. And most cameras, uh, especially if you guys have a digital SLR, but a lot of point and shoots are giving the ability to shoot in RAW as well. Basically, RAW files just capture a lot more information than JPEG files do. So it's a really good idea to shoot in RAW files. And I'm gonna just show you, you know, basically you just wanna make sure it says RAW here. Um, JPEG files take up less space on like a memory card and less space on your computer. However, they have less information too. So if you wanna edit it late, later, like let's say you take a picture and uh, it's all yellow or something, uh, that's a white balance issue, or it's like too light or too dark, that's an exposure issue. Um, you can fix that a lot easier in Camera Raw. It's a lot harder to fix it when you're, you're working with JPEG. So um, I've taken a few pictures. We're gonna go ahead and load them onto the memory card and uh, we're gonna work in Lightroom and then I'm gonna show you guys what you can do in Photoshop as well. And uh, basically how I've handled my raw files. So uh, raw files, if you guys are shooting with a Canon, uh, Canon, <laughs> which is what I have right now is a Canon. Um, it's going to be like a CR2 file. If you guys are shooting Nikon, it's going to be an NEF file. Uh, Olympus is an ORF file. So there are a bunch of different, um, the, that's the end of the file. So it'll be like, you know, image 1256.CR2 or something like that. Um, there are a bunch of different file formats, but basically when I bring uh, things from the uh, camera into my computer, I usually convert them to DNG, which is a digital negative file. And uh, the reason I do that, they take up a little less space and they just kind of, um, that's an Adobe version of a RAW file instead of like a Canon version. And it's basically, it's a lot more future proof. So that's why I do that. So um, I've got my CF card and a card reader. I'm in Lightroom right now and uh, then we'll use Photoshop too. But I'm gonna go to file and then down here to import photos. And you can see, this is actually from a shoot that we just did um, not too long ago. We did quite a bit of really, really cool stuff. And um, I'm just gonna import one or two of these fo files here. These are just uh, stuff that we did for a, uh, for a headpiece shot. Let's just see, I'll, I'll uncheck all of them and then we'll just import one of these. Um, uh, we had a model who had like custom designed headpieces, so we, we photographed those for her. And uh, just as a favor, because she's done a lot of awesome modeling for us. So. Um, we're going to do that and you can choose up here to just copy and it's going to copy to new location and add to the catalog and um, that's going to be, you can see here, it's a CR2 file. Let's just zoom in so you guys can see better. There we go. So that's a CR2 file and if you go here to copy as DNG, basically it converts it over to the DNG file format and then puts it on your computer and that's what I prefer. But uh, you can do whatever you want. I wouldn't suggest just going, you can't do move or add, that's if um, files are already on your computer. So if you are importing from a memory card, you wanna go to copy as DNG, that's, that's what I prefer. And usually I just let uh, Lightroom handle my file, uh, the cataloging, things like that, because it's just, you know, it, it puts it here in pictures in 2012 and assigns it a date. So it's really easy to just have everything uh, kind of figured out. So we're just gonna import this one file for now. And I'm gonna hit import here. There we go, it's gonna convert to digital negative and import. All right, and it will take a little bit longer because it has to convert that file. If you're just importing like straight from CR2 and it's gonna be a CR2 on your computer, it will go a lot quicker. But if uh, if you do have it be convert to a uh, DNG, it's gonna have to like, it has to bring it in and then convert the file. But um, you wind up saving quite a bit of space on your computer. The files are usually smaller and um, they're future proof too. So let's go ahead and bring this in. I'm just gonna double click on it. And you can see this is basically Sit tab so we can get that going on. Um, this is basically just straight out of the camera here. You can see it's just image 4990.dng. And uh, this is a photo we took basically with the, with the sole uh, intention of this photo. Let's go to half size um, to show off the headpiece that she's got on her head. So she's got a red wig on and we gel the light with cyan to kind of um, balance the red. So there are a lot of things you guys can do to a raw file. I'm just gonna show you guys the couple of things that I do with a raw file before taking it into Photoshop. Um, and that's over here in the develop panel. So the DNG, that is a raw file. And 
here in the develop panel, most of what you want to do before you start actually editing your image, I would say are things like your exposure, or if you have like a white balance issue, those are the things that I would take care of uh, when it's a raw file so that you don't have to worry about that later when you're editing. It's a lot more information you get with a raw file. So changing those things is a little easier. So for exposure, let's say we just want to like uh, increase the temperature. That's going to make it a little bit warmer or decrease. It's going to make it a little bit cooler. So you can kind of see the, the uh, difference that that'll make. You can make it more magenta or more magreen. Magreen. <laughs> magreen is the opposite of magenta, apparently. Um, and then genta is just its own color. So we're going to play around with that. Um, the exposure is okay here. It's a little bit less exposed than I wanted. I wanted it pretty dark on her face and mostly just, you know, focus there on, on that uh, headpiece there. Um, but we're going to just bring our exposure up just a tiny bit. And we're going to click on fill light. And that's basically going to take the shadows and make those a little bit lighter. So bringing up the fill light a little bit. And I still want it mostly focused on her face. Now, um, recovery over here, that's going to take, like, if an area is too light, it's going to try to make it a little bit darker. So if you have an area that's a little blown out in your photos, um, it's going to try to fix that. So bringing recovery in here, let's just zoom into this headpiece. There we go. You can see it does get pretty light up here. And as I bring up the recovery slider, it does a pretty decent job at bringing that back to a, an exposure that we like. So it just makes it basically look like you're a better photographer, which um, <laughs> I appreciate. Um, you can change your black levels and things like that, too. Normally, it'll load in a default based on what camera you have. Um, changing things like brightness. Usually, what I do, um, you know, when I'm when I'm bringing these folders, in, these images in, is I try to get it like generally looking pretty good. Lightroom, I don't use for, you know, if we wanted to put a crazy skin texture on our face or something like that, we wouldn't use Lightroom for that. But when we're just doing something like this, Lightroom is perfect. So you can adjust your temperature even more. Now, if we were, if we had like a gray card or something like that in the shot, you can actually use this guy and just click on like a target neutral. But our background actually was magenta too, so we can't we can't use anything. There's no no neutral grays in this shot to uh, to click on you know your little eyedropper here and then get that going. Um, basically, if there was a target neutral gray, you could click on here and it would adjust your white balance accordingly. You can see my white balance up there. Like if I clicked here, it would go a lot more blue. And if I click on the background, it would go green because it basically tries to choose the opposite of wherever you're clicking. So I don't know. You can even use it for some cool effects, but um, we're just going to keep it a little bit more on the same side. There we go. Very cool. And that's really about all I do in Lightroom. So um, again, adjusting exposure as you need to, and you can do it for look. You know, if you want that kind of look, uh, totally go for it. And you know, here in your tint, you can add more greens or more magentas, depending on what kind of look you want. Um, most of my cropping, I will do in, I'll do it in Lightroom if I if it if it's okay and like the file is good to go. At, uh, let me explain this a little bit better. If I'm going to be editing the photo in Photoshop, usually I'll edit the photo in Photoshop and not crop it, and then I'll re-import it back into Lightroom, just like the same we just did, and then I'll crop it in Lightroom because you have a lot more um, variability with your crop. Like if you crop something, you can go back uh, two years later and, uh, and redo the crop. Like you could make it bigger, and uh, it's harder to do that in Photoshop. But if you do want to crop, you can do that here in Lightroom too. So let's say that we're not going to edit this photo in Photoshop at all. Let's just bring this in, and I can go ahead and crop it something like that. We don't want to crop that headpiece off because again, that's that's kind of the focus of the image. So we'll hit enter there and we'll just say that's crop that we want. Maybe we'll bring it more that way. Okay, cool. So let's say that's the photo that we want to do. Um, you know, th that's the crop that we want to actually use in, uh, in the final image. So that's editing it in here in uh, Lightroom. I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to go to um, show in Finder. There we go. Perfect. And this is the original DNG. So if I double click on this, it's going to open it here in Photoshop because I have Photoshop set to the default. Now, because it is a DNG, you can see all these changes that I just applied in Lightroom. These aren't actually applied to the image. They're applied to it. It's like it's not a permanent change. It's just applied to a file that goes along with the image that says like, oh, we should change a couple things. But the original image, that original raw file is always going to stay raw. So you can see here in Lightroom, all these changes that I made. Now, if I'm bringing it back in Photoshop, it looks just like it did when the beginning. So if you guys don't have Lightroom, it's not a big deal. You can actually use the same things here in uh, Canon Raw. Sorry, Camera Raw, Canon Raw. They'd be so proud of me trying to sell their products. <laughs> you basically have a lot of these same sliders. So um, if you're asking why would you even use uh, Lightroom, I use Lightroom is really great for cataloging and uh, 
in my opinion, it, it just does this sort of stuff a little bit, I don't know about does it better than Camera Raw, but you can sync files. Like if I did a change on one, you could sync a bunch of them. It just keeps everything kind of like there for you to see. So I really like Lightroom, but you can do all that stuff here in, in Photoshop as well in Camera Raw. So again, we're bringing it, you can see it's editing it now in 16-bit and you can just choose, you know, like Vibrance. You can choose all kinds of stuff, same as Lightroom, um, but basically this is bringing it in. So you can hit open image here and then it's going to take it, put all those things, that, those adjustments that we just made and it's gonna bring it here into fo Photoshop as well. So um, it's a total preference thing. Uh, usually for Lightroom, I like to do my general adjustments just like we did. In Photoshop, I leave to like, you know, uh, you know, really tight skin retouching or adding cool effects and things like that. Uh, really big color toning, I'll do that, all that in Photoshop. But if all I'm gonna do is fix like exposure and white balance on an image, like if I'm not trying to do anything crazy, I won't even go in Photoshop because it's not, you don't really need to. It, it's not gonna give you anything more that Lightroom won't give you if all you're doing is just a little bit of color work. All right. Now you can see 16-bit um, files, this is what we have right here, is they, they're pretty big um, as far as uh, size and as far as computer resources. So if you are on a computer that's not as fast, like this laptop isn't really that fast to be honest, um, it's a little bit easier. Once If you've got a base like pretty much set to what you want, you can then go to image, mode, and then down here to 8-bit, and that's going to turn it basically into a JPEG. So. Um, you want to do, when you're in RAW, you want to do things like your white balance and your exposure, things like fill light. Those are really good to do in 16-bit, and RAW is 16-bit, JPEG is going to be 8-bit. But once you've got those, you can go ahead and convert into JPEG, which is going to be 8-bit, and you're not really going to, it's better to edit in 16-bit all the time, but my computers can't even handle it. Like, it, <laughs> files get really, really big. So. Um, it's better to edit in 16-bit, but usually if you take care of your exposure and your white balance and your like fill light and things like that in RAW, then you can just edit it in JPEG, you'll be just fine. So that's this image now, you can see it's a JPEG and you can do whatever editing you want and go ahead and save it out. So that's what RAW processing is, guys. Um, totally easy. From Lightroom, again, if you wanted to set save this out, what I would do is right click here, go to export, and you can hit export there. Put it on desktop if you wanted to. You can just put it in a subfolder, call it raw conversion. And here you can choose what format you'd like to uh, export it as. So you could choose to export it again out as a DNG, which would be exporting it out as a digital negative, or you can just choose a JPEG, which is what I would do if I was putting it on the internet or something like that. So a JPEG quality 75 color space sRGB, that's perfect for the internet. There we go, and hit export. So that's bringing a raw file into your computer making a couple changes with it and then exporting it back out. So now you could take that JPEG file and you can put that on the internet and people can view that and things like that. So um, same thing in Photoshop, if you wanna just go to like file down to save as and you can just save that out as a JPEG too. So let's go ahead and view that file. Grab my desktop here and raw conversion, there we go. We can see it's a JPEG. It looks exactly like the same it did in the raw file from Lightroom and you can put this on the internet and everyone will be able to view it. So that's pretty much it guys. Well that's it for raw files guys. That's how I use my raw files. I always shoot in raw 100% of the time. If I need extra space usually I'll just buy a hard drive and stick them on there and things like that. Um, I think shooting in raw gives you a lot more opportunity to change and uh, edit your images once you've already taken them. So let me know how you guys are using your camera, your raw files. If you guys are shooting in JPEG and you have a really good reason why, let me know too. I'd love to know that. Thanks so much for watching Florin guys. I hope this helped out. Florin you later.